Odds are stacked up against you, but you can win. Win anyway. Keep your eyes on the prize, cause you can win. Win anyway. You've got too much to live for. Win anyway. Win yeah. anyway. This is only one chapter in your book. Keep reading, keep praying, keep win healing. Anyway. single week I'm getting better hats off to me hats off to me I see your comments today I see Facebook is uh, live and uh, YouTube is live and I want you to uh, share this uh, interview conversation with all of your platform people um, share it while we're on share it after we're on this one is going to be for the books. I guarantee you, I'm going to cry. I know it. I'm going to laugh. I know it. And I am going to get better because in my life, uh, this man has made me better. Um, and so, I am so excited to introduce to some and to present to others my mentor, my guide, Rodney Lofton. Yeah, Rodney. Yes, yeah, great to see you and everybody out there. Um, this is a pleasure for me to dig deep and to find out what's this book all about and what made you do it. So I want to ask the first question. What book numbers, how many books have you written so far already? Ten. 10 books. Wow, that's powerful. 
That is powerful. That is powerful. So what inspired you to write this particular book when anyway? I think that in my life, God is pivoting me um, to go to the marketplace. In my life, I needed a book that I could speak to young kids. I could speak to um, young adults. I could speak to anyone and tell them through my story how to turn obstacles into opportunities. And when I went through all of my books, I had that I could really speak to um, that covered a lot um, without the church jargon. So this book is different than other books because um, I don't preach, I don't reference scripture, it's just my life. And I like that um, I'm a storyteller. And so this book is different in that way. Okay. And I know you're a storyteller. Tell us two challenges, major challenges that you, we could find in your book and how you overcame those challenges to win anyway. Well, the first one happened to me when I was a kid. I had asthma really, really bad. Um, I would have to go to the hospital. Um, I had an asthma pump and then I graduated to an asthma machine. <laughs> it was really, really crazy. In middle school, everyone was saying, you're not going to run. You, you just can't because your breathing patterns are really bad. Um, but by the time I graduated from high school, I not only ran, I ran track and I ran in the high hurdles. Um, and so... Wow. I didn't get a scholarship or whatever for college for that. But when I graduated from high school, um, I was running and I did not have an asthma pump. And so I highlight that because winning looks different for everybody, but you have to win on your level and you have to celebrate the highlights that you know are in your life. You don't have to win a gold medal all the time. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I like that. I like that. So we have a lot of people in the audience who are interested in being an author as well, because I don't want to dig deep into the book quite yet. Talk about your creative process with this book. I want to hear a little bit about the creative process. Where did the thoughts come from? Yeah. So I was invited to Job Corps a few years back. And... I was excited because um, I was going to speak to young men or young people that had a really um, hard life. And so when I went to um, that campus, I was blown away. Um, there were a thousand young people looking at me and hanging on every single word that I said. and when I left them, I was like, yo, I don't have a book to give them to concretize this moment. Um, and that really started the creative process for this book. That was, I guess now, five years ago. Um, wow, wow. And then uh, when I went home, I outlined um, what I would, say i wanted to expect <laughs> in fact i just recently photos in my phone and i saw the cover of the book um when it was in infantile stages and um okay. I, I reflected back to that moment and so when i sat down to write i wanted my life to speak to everyone. So when I outlined, I was sure that I wanted to highlight winds from the valley. I didn't want to highlight my mountaintop winds. Gotcha. The people that know me, the people that read my resumes, um, the people that are impressed by whatever I have done. I wanted this book to highlight the valley winds. And so um, when I was outlining, that was what uh, was in my mind. And then because I was so busy, 
doing life because this was um, before the strokes, this was before the pandemic. Um, I had um, an assistant um, on my team that listened while I just talked about my life. Um, that was the first draft, just talking about it, just enveloping what I was thinking in those moments. And then she transcribed it. And that was how I had the chapters to write. Okay. So one more question about you as an author before we get to the book. So you have, I'm sure you run into some challenges writing or, you know, you, the inspiration, you lose it. What techniques or what do you do to get that rolling again? You know, you get stuck. How do you keep that momentum going? Um, read great books. Okay. Read great books or audio books. Um, everybody has their list of authors that they gravitate toward. Um, my favorite author is not a Christian writer. Um, James Patterson is my is my author that I run to. Great writer. Um, yeah, because his books are also so interesting, but his chapters are short. And I like that because the attention span um, of the human is not enough to um, have long chapters. Right, right. People have them. And that's great, but I don't like them. So um, he is one of my favorite authors. And um, and then you have to give your mind time to rest. I look at book writing like planting a garden. You don't plant a seed in the ground today and have a garden tomorrow. Right. And there's always germination processes that have to go with really substantive writing. Yes. So if you don't have it in you today, work on your bio or work on your website, uh, but don't force it. God will make sure that everything lines up in the right time. Okay. So let's talk about the book now. Talk to me. Where did you get that title from? I love that title. When anyway, where did that come from? I guess because I was targeting um young people i wanted a title that would catch them out the gate um because if i'm targeting black brothers i know that you have to hit them out the gate especially if you're writing a book right um and then you have to hit them with a strong introduction and a strong first chapter because half of them are not reading after the first chapter <laughs> um and so it just came to me, um, you know, the winning is easy, but it's the anyway that's unique. And in my life, um, I've always won with a different set of tools. I've always won um, in a unique way. And so if that's my story, that could be your story. And I wanted to leave something in the earth, this is uh, Rodney's thing, that uh, could be my legacy builder. Got you. Um, I just didn't want to write a book. I wanted to leave something in the earth so that um, my daughter could have a pathway to win anyway, so that young brothers like me could have a pathway to win anyway, uh, so that business owners like me could have a path to, to win anyway. Um, and if you are an educator, you have a path to win anyway. Okay. Now you mentioned your daughter a couple of times. Is she mentioned? I think I read someplace in the book she's mentioned in the book. Tell us about that part, that chapter where she's mentioned in the book. Yeah. So um, my daughter is a miracle in my life. Um, I have a whole chapter dedicated to her um, because when she came in this earth, I feel like I lived again. Good. I feel like. I wasn't really living until I became a father. Okay. Um, and that may be different for other people. Um, but I think in that chapter, I wanted everyone to gravitate to a reason beyond you. Um, because if we're just living our lives for us, we haven't gone on to second base. We haven't really lived. And so 
Uh, when she was born, I was born again. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Are there any re reoccurring themes or messages that you convey in the book? Any reoccurring? Um, well, in my subtitle, that's really what I was wanting to say to everybody. How to turn obstacles into opportunities. That's the reoccurring thing. When you read my book, you will discover several obstacles in the chapters, but every single chapter and every single ending is how I turn those obstacles into opportunities. Um, because I want you to turn every obstacle that you have into opportunities. We're all poor in some area. Even the richest person is poor in some area. And so I can make excuses or I could turn them into engines. And I wanted every single chapter to repeat that phraseology, how to turn obstacles into opportunities. Okay. So so it's clear that in your life you've handled negative criticism and feedback. Is there a place in the book that you mentioned some of that, uh, how you handled negative criticism and feedback that you can tell the audience? Um, <laughs> um, the hardest chapter, well, there are two hard chapters, but the hardest chapter to write and to live is the rejection chapter. Um when I started my PhD journey, I was 21. Wow. Um, and wow. I got rejected from Duke and I only applied to Duke. And so um, when you get that rejection, it sits on you differently because you know that someone or some team surveyed your writing, surveyed your application and said you weren't enough. Wow. Um, and that has happened to me several times, even last year. When I recovered from my stroke, I thought, okay, this is God's will. I'm gonna go back and apply again. And I applied to five schools this time so that I had options so that if a, a rejection letter came, I would be good because I would have one acceptance letter. Okay. Well, all five of the school. Ooh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. All five. All five. So what's the lesson for the Ask audience about friend. that? Say it again. What's the lesson for the audience about that? Um, so... I had waited nine years to apply because I was so afraid of rejection. Okay. Those nine years, um, I had to grieve. I had to do some other things. Um, but when I was ready to apply, I thought that God owed me something because wow. I was ready. And okay. I want you guys to know that if you are delayed in what you want to do, God doesn't owe you anything. God doesn't have to accept you just because you applied. <laughs> and so that was um, important. And then the other thing that was important was I was applying while I was healing and I could not even write. So I had my assistant to write for me. We were massaging my last applications and she really did the hard work. Um, and I think now that I'm healed and now that I'm recovered more than I was last year, I think it wasn't my intellect. It wasn't, I wasn't smart enough. Was it was wisdom? God's way of like, yo, you need to heal more. Right. And if you go into school like this, then you'll always be dependent on someone else to get you through. Okay. So let me pause your life so that you can heal and then i'll accept you when the time is right gotcha. so everybody has um rejection and rejection never feels good but you have to focus on why 
that rejection hit your life in this season. Right. Um, people like say that. that rejection is the redirection, and I get that, um, but it still hurts. Right. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Can we see the cover of your book? Can you show us the cover of your book? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like that. So so tell me the table of contents in there. What is your favorite chapter in there that people must read that chapter? And the second question to that, can I skip around or do I have to go in sequence when I read the book? Ooh. Um, okay. So my favorite chapter, chapter seven. If you don't have time to read the entire book, read chapter seven. If you learn from it, it's not a mistake. It's tuition. Okay. If wow. you learn from it, it's not a mistake. It's tuition. And in that chapter, um, I journey through my rejection. I journey through um, a time where um, I was in India uh, and I was there for um, a study abroad um, class. And I got an email from my dissertation advisor that she was going to fail me wow. because I did not um, turn in my dissertation on time. And um, it's a really good chapter. That's wow. all I'll say. That's uh, you don't have to read um, the chapters in sequence. Okay. They're already kind of their own stories. Got you. So you can skip around. You can skip around. All right. Um, so in, in I'm an educator and in education, math is considered, they call it productive struggle, you know, productive struggle. Are there any other stories you like to share in from the book? Um, are they all stories just about you or do you use anybody out there in the world that has gone through those struggles? Um, I have in every chapter, um, the chapter begins with a highlight or a quote from Barack Obama from uh, nice. uh, Oprah Winfrey. Uh, Read one of those quotes, please, if you can. That'd yeah. be great. All right. All right. What's the chapter title and the quote that goes with the chapter? Mm -hmm. I'll read the first one. The chapter that I'm reading from is chapter one. And the title of the chapter is Turn Every Excuse Into an Engine. And Oprah Winfrey says, your life is a class. Wow. That's the quote. Wow. From the beginning of the book, I want people to know that your life is a class. There's wow. someone learning from every decision that you're making. Wow. So take it seriously. OK, I like that. So is there anything else you want to add to our conversation that they, the audience might want to hear from you? and? and tell them how to get a copy of the book. I know they all know the platform, but just remind them the platform to get it. And one last thought that you want to leave out there. Yes, I wanted you to interview me so that I could say thank you. Okay. Um, because you saw something in me that no one had ever seen or no one had ever tapped into. Um, and I think it was like 10 years ago now that we were church members. You were an educator at the high, high, high ranks of Trenton, New Jersey. You had a lot going on. Um, even now you have a lot going on. And even um, you taking the time out to do this interview is uh, emotional for me because I know um, that I have a special place in your heart, uh, but you have a special place in mine. And I wanted everyone to look at um, the life lesson of me being a mentor and mentoring others, but everybody needs a mentor too. And when you approach me after some Sunday service, and said, I wanna take you out to eat. I was like, okay, he wants to write a book. Because in my mind, there was no reason for someone to approach me for me. They, they wanted to approach me for something that I could do for them. 
And uh, when we went out to eat um, at that brunch spot or that, um, yeah, brunch spot, and you looked at me across that table and you said, so you write for a living if you breathed your last breath, have you written your greatest work? Um, I could, I could, I could see it like it was yesterday. Wow! That you said to me at that table, um, I see your energy in all of this, but have you written your greatest work? Have you written? the thing that you were put in the earth to do. Wow. And um, I hadn't written it. I hadn't had the time. And I had no direction for my creativity. I had no one to stop long enough to notice me and say, now put some measures in place so that your life can be intentional with what you are doing. And uh, I wanted this interview time to publicly say thank you because that conversation shifted my life forever. Okay. And you have shifted my life forever. Um, <laughs> your wife and your house has been my house. Um, Y'all have loved me in good times and in bad times. And there are people that love you for you. If y'all don't hear anything that I say tonight, please know that God has a surrogate family for you when you feel all alone. And that conversation quickly um, convicted me, but it set me on a journey. And you didn't leave me on that journey alone. You met with me until I got it so that I could really do it. And so if I take my last breath now, I have worship anyway, because I think that was what I was planted in the earth to write. And I have a win anyway. And that was planted, and I was planted in the earth to write. One is um, spiritual, and one is marketplace. Gotcha. And both of them I've written because of you. I hear that. I hear that. So I didn't want to end this until you let people know where we can get this book. Where can we get okay. this book? Um, so you can get the book from my website. Hey, it's on my shirt. You can get the book from my website or you can um, meet me in person because I am on tour right now and I'm going to city by city. And if you are in the same city or if you are in the surrounding areas, then we can talk when I am in your city. Okay. So two platforms, are they able to get it on any other platform at this time? No, no, okay. but they okay. will. Okay. Um, but it's not it's not there yet. Right. One last comment. Any burning last comments? I appreciate the opportunity to hear more from you, both as an author and this book in particular. Uh, I love the title. It is hot. It's on point. It makes me understand exactly when I read the title what it means. That means that when I fail, I need to keep on going and win anyway, no matter what it is, because yeah. I'm going to learn from those lessons. I appreciate the time that you've taken with us to share what you and how you got to the point of writing this book. And I really applaud people to pick the book up. I mean, it, it's not an expensive book. It's an easy read and you'll dive right into it. And you want to read chapter after chapter once you get started. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. I mean, that was what I attempted to write in this book. Don't wallow in excuses win anyway because everybody has something everybody has something um but you can win you can win yep absolutely 
Well, this was great. And Rodney is uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm surprised that I didn't cry because um, he is special. Um, and his wife is special. And their sister is special. Um, and uh, I know that God sets you up to be around special people because he wants you to see that you two are special. And so if there's anybody watching this um, that needs a mentor, that needs someone to pour into them, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. God has someone right around the corner, right in your purview, right in your church or in your community that can help you. Or you can mentor um, with someone online. You can mentor with someone through YouTube because um, God always provides surrogates. And in my life 10 years ago, I needed someone to re- um, adjust my energy. Um, and that was Rodney. And so I am so grateful that he took the time to do this. Um, and, uh, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. You have to win anyway. You have to, there are people waiting for you to win in whatever sphere that you are called to win in. And if you procrastinate, they don't get accepted to their thing. If you give excuses, then there's a whole lot of people that are not going to get it the way it's given to you. And I want you to learn from this. I want you to learn from my story. Um, and I want you to walk out in the world winning anyway. I want it to be contagious. That is my prayer for this book. Winning anyway, I want it to be contagious. Uh, you're, you may not be a teacher. You may not be an educator. You may not be a churchgoer, but you can win anyway. And so I just want to thank Rodney for his time. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. And then I want to thank y'all for broadcasting this in your sphere of influences so that everybody connected to you can win too.